artificial intelligence, the newest evolution in technology that could herald the next great leap in human achievement or our inevitable doom. Hopefully it's that first one. But what if I told you that artificial intelligence is not as novel as you were led to believe? What if I told you that it's been lurking in these shadows for years, nay, decades, infecting all aspects of technology, learning everything it could about humanity to eventually take its bloody vengeance? What if I told you that Pokemon has been using artificial intelligence this whole time? time. And it's not actually that scary. Richard, hit that intro. Admittedly, this probably won't come as a shock to most of you, but Pokemon uses artificial intelligence. Not the kind of AI that'll steal your art or make Mr. Krabs rickroll you. Rather, the AI in Pokemon, and in pretty much every video game, is the bit of code that non-player characters use to make decisions. It's how Bokoblins know how to run towards you, it's how the other racers in Mario Kart don't go careening off a cliff, and it's how Pokemon trainers decide when to stop spamming recover. You're not gonna win, Misty! The Pokemon Trainer AI is possibly the single most important system in a Pokemon game. It's very complicated, but if you can fully and completely understand how it works, then you can effectively predict what every trainer will do before they do it. And as our good pal Sun Tzu said, if you can do that, then you'll never lose. Fun fact, The Art of War was actually written because he was so frustrated that he couldn't beat Cynthia. So today, I thought I would read a couple of super long wiki articles, compile all the information into a nice 17 minute video full of witty commentary and some running joke about becoming a Pokemon god, and help us all better understand why the NPC trainers make the decisions that they do. Except I couldn't do that. Uh, see, I went looking for articles, videos, anything to try and learn more about how the Pokemon AI works, but it doesn't exist. Uh, seriously, it seems like literally nobody knows how this thing works. I found some random Reddit posts that seem to suggest that Gens 1 through 4 change the trainer AI quite a bit, but from Gen 5 onwards, it remains pretty constant. Uh, but aside from that, Nothing. The closest thing that I could find was an article on the Pokemon Essentials Wiki, which is a program for making Pokemon fan games on the AI systems that they use, which attempts to emulate the AI from modern Pokemon games, which is about as close as I could get. All that is to say, short of breaking into Game Freak HQ and stealing the code myself, I won't be able to give you a completely exhaustive explanation of how the Pokemon AI works. Well, actually, let me try it. Yep, it didn't work. But what I can do is give you a solid understanding of roughly how it works. Because, as Sun Tzu famously said, if you know yourself and you have a pretty good idea of your enemy, like, you know someone who tried really hard to be like your enemy and it seems like they got pretty close, then you'll probably be fine. What a wise guy, that Sun Tzu. So with that out of the way, welcome to all the people who clicked that passive aggressive the video starts here with a timestamp comment, and now let's crack this thing open. The Pokemon Essentials Wiki lists five distinct levels of AI, each with their own capabilities, but based on my research, it seems like the regular Pokemon games only have three. Let's start by looking at the standard AI, which is how most of the trainers in the game operate. The main decision that this AI needs to make is which move it should select. To do this, it uses a very complicated formula that I could not find to rank each one of its available moves and then it will select which one it calculates to be the most useful. This is actually not too dissimilar to the process that I often use in videos to statistically rank stuff, only they're not an idiot like me. 
The game considers stuff like damage output, applying status effects, and whether the attack will do something beneficial to you. So like, it'll try to avoid using a fire type on a frozen Pokemon or a water attack on someone with water absorb. Standard AI trainers also, canonically, don't know how to count because they don't get any information on how much health your Pokemon has or their own Pokemon has, meaning they won't know to use a priority attack if you're low on health or wait till they're about to die before blowing their coffin the hell up. A standard AI will never switch out their Pokemon unless they literally cannot do anything. However, when that coughing does inevitably explode, the AI has its next major decision to make. Who to send in next? In Gens 1 through 4, it sounds like they never really nailed down a good way to do this, but from Generation 5 onwards, the game will calculate the base power of every attack that all of the Pokemon on the bench have, accounting for super effective damage, but not stab for some reason, and will send out the Pokemon with the single attack that has the highest base power. So, as an example, say you have a Tyranitar on the field, and the other trainer has a Floatzel with Aqua Tail and a Weak Vile with Revenge. Aquatail has a base power of 90, which gets multiplied by 2 for being super effective against Rock for a final base power of 180. Revenge has a base power of 60, with the potential to be doubled if the user gets hit before using the attack that turn, but the AI doesn't know that. However, fighting is four times super effective against Tyranitar, bumping this 60 up to 240. Since 240 is higher than 180, the AI will switch into Weavile, despite the fact that Weavile is weak to rock, and if we take Stab into account, Aqua Tail is actually stronger. So technically, Floatzel would have been the better choice here. <laughs> Idiot. Finally, if a trainer has items like potions, they will wait until they can get the most bang for their buck out of it before using it. So if a gym leader has a hyper potion that heals 120 HP, they're not going to use it if their Pokemon has only lost 40. That's why sometimes it seems like a gym leader will leave their Pokemon out for dead even if they have a potion on hand and could absolutely heal it. It's because they think that Mr. Mime is worthless and it deserves to die, and I agree. Those are all the major decisions that a standard AI has to make over the course of a battle, or at least as many as I could learn about without getting arrested for espionage. A few trainers per game have a slightly more advanced AI, often referred to as Smart AI. These are trainers like the Elite Four, the Champion, uh, maybe an evil team leader. They can do all the things that a standard AI could do, but they're also dirty little cheaters who had the audacity to learn how to read. See, unlike regular trainers, the smart AI gets to know the exact HP values of every Pokemon on the field, and they can use that in damage calculations to inform their decisions. So if you're low on HP and Cynthia knows that an extreme speed is gonna take you out, you best believe she's gonna be spamming that thing nonstop. Just Smart trainers are also allowed to fathom the idea of switching out their Pokemon in a bad matchup, though they will only do so if they have a Pokemon in the back that could take an attack from you on the turn they switch in and can deal substantial damage back. They're also far less likely to switch out if you have some sort of entry hazard on the field to avoid taking that damage. So that's the standard AI and the smart AI explained, but that still leaves one more. Based on the structure of this video, you've probably guessed that this third and final AI is one that is smarter and more powerful than even the previous two. One that belongs to only the most talented of in-game trainers, or perhaps being reserved for Pokemon with intelligence that far surpasses human ability. Pokemon like Metagross, the sentient supercomputer, Mewtwo, the synthetic being that outsmarted even the brilliant scientist that created it, or Alakazam, whose Pokedex entry states that it has an IQ over 5,000. Well, my friends, perhaps you're smarter than I gave you credit for. The AI for a Pokemon as smart as Alakazam is incredibly complicated, but I'll do my best to explain it as succinctly as I can. Though, judging by the amount of time left on this video, you might want to strap in. Okay, ready? 
it doesn't have one. To be more specific, any wild Pokemon in the game doesn't have any sort of AI or complex decision-making algorithm. Instead, the game will literally just pick moves at random. It doesn't matter if it's a Bidoof or an Alakazam, if it's a Pokemon you met in the wild, it is literally incapable of any sort of strategy. So, to all you people coming up with infinite PP Lepaberry exploits to say that one of every Pokemon could beat one billion lions, you can suck it! Even lions are capable of more rational thought than just jabbing a finger at the screen and saying, yeah, you know what, let's go with Splash. Now, explaining all this stuff with a list of rules and logistics is all well and good, but instead of just telling you how the Pokemon AI works, I think it might be more impactful if I show you. So, I want you to ask yourself the question, Are you smarter than a Pokemon? The only game show where the stakes are high and the prizes don't exist. Let's introduce our contestants. First, we have a highly advanced AI that I have developed myself. Come on in, Chad GPT. Now, Chad here uses cutting edge AI technology to perfectly emulate the intelligence of a wild Alakazam. His IQ far exceeds 5,000, and he's only capable of randomly selecting answers without any rhyme or reason. Classic Chad. Next up, we have my assistant, Richard! Uh, Richard here is sort of a control group, because the only thing that trumps my hatred for him is my love of good science. And lastly, we have you, the viewer! Give it up, everyone! Now, contestants, the rules of the game are simple. I will present you with a scenario and a Pokemon battle, and give you four possible ways to proceed. If you can choose the best possible option, then you win a point. If you're wrong, then you win shame. After four questions, we'll tally up the final scores and find our winner. If you score more than one point, then congratulations, your IQ is officially higher than 5,000. Feel free to leave your guesses in the comments down below so you can flex your major IQ on everyone who totally can't see that little edited tag. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. So contestants, without any further ado, let's get into the game with question one. You have an Alolan Persian with the ability Technician and the moves Night Slash, Play Rough, Quash, and Assurance. You are facing a Crobat whose moves you do not know. For this problem, and for all future problems, assume that all Pokemon have no items and no EV or IV investments unless otherwise indicated. Should your Persian use A. Night Slash, B. Play Rough, C. Quash, or D. Assurance? Time's up, contestants, let's see those answers. It looks like Chad GPT has selected Play Rough, and my assistant Richard has chosen Quash for, uh, for some reason, a little weird, but uh, okay. Unfortunately, in this case, the correct answer was D, Assurance, because Crobat has a base speed of 130, and a Lowland Persian only has a base speed of 115, the Crobat will go first. Assuming the Crobat attacks you, Assurance will have its base power boosted to 120. Even in the event that Night Slash gets a critical hit, it will only have a base power of 107. That means that Richard and Chad have yet to get on the board, but remember to keep track of your score and the comments down below. Okay contestants, moving on to question two. Because Richard was an idiot who chose Quash, the Crobat was able to defeat your Persian. Waiting in the wings, you have an Alakazam with Confusion, an Ursaring with Stone Edge, an Unknown with Hidden Power Ice, or a Gliscor with Acrobatics. Should you switch into A. Alakazam, B. Ursaring, C. Quash, or D. Gliscor? Pencils down, contestants, that's time. 
Let's reveal those answers and see how you did. It appears that Chad has gone with Alakazam, and Richard has, once again, chosen Quash. A bold move considering the fact that it wasn't even an option in the problem statement, but unfortunately, it seems that the risk did not pay off because the correct answer was actually D, Gliscor. Those of you who did the base power calculations may have attempted to choose Ursaring, as the base power of Stone Edge comes out to 200. However, Ursaring is very slow and has a comparable defense to Persian, meaning that it may not be able to survive to attack itself. Though an acrobatics from Gliscor is not as powerful, Gliscor will be able to take attacks a lot better than Ursaring. So, that's no points for Richard or Chad. I know that was a bit of a tricky question, so I'll make this one nice and easy for you with question three. Given the function zeta of s equals the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n to the power of s, prove that the real component of any non-trivial root will be equal to one over two. Is the correct answer A, when s is equal to 2 to the power of 82,589,933 all minus 1, the real component of the root is not equal to 1 over 2. B. 12. C. This statement is impossible to prove. Or D. Quash. Alright contestants, that's time! Now, I think we can all agree that this one was pretty easy. It looks as though Chad has chosen B, 12, and Richard has decided to go with D, Quash. Clearly here, the correct answer is B, which means Chad is on the board with one point and Richard remains at zero as we head into our fourth and final question. Alright contestants, this one is for all the marbles. Question four. You are in a double battle. You have a Tyranitar with only Rock Slide, who has 50% of its health remaining, and an Alolan Persian with Growl, Scratch, Quash, and Switcheroo, and who only has one HP. You are facing a Hariyama with close combat and a Floatzel with Aqua Tail. You know that your Persian will outspeed the Floatzel. Any attack that you use with a final base power of 40 or higher will KO the Hariyama, and any move with a final base power of 60 or higher will KO the Floatzel. Should your Persian use A. Growl B. Scratch C. Quash or D. Switcheroo and time is up. For the final time, let's see those answers. It looks as though both Richard and Chad are in agreement. This is finally the time where Quash is the correct answer. And I'm happy to say that they are both wrong. The correct answer in this case is actually B, Scratch. Looking at these speed stats, we know that Persian will go first followed by Floatzel, then Tyranitar, and lastly, Hariyama. If Persian uses Quash on the Floatzel, then it will ensure that Floatzel moves last. Tyranitar will come up next, and it will use Rock Slide to hit both Hariyama and Floatzel. Rock Slide can do enough damage to KO both of the opposing Pokemon. However, it only has 90% accuracy, meaning that you have a 19% chance of missing at least one of the opposing Pokemon, allowing the other one to attack and KO your Tyranitar. Scratch has a base power of 40, meaning that it is not powerful enough to take down the Floatzel. But remember from question one, our Persian has Technician, which boosts the power of attacks with a base power of 60 or lower, meaning that our Scratch now has a base power of 60, which is enough to KO the Floatzel. Since Scratch has 100% accuracy and Rock Slide now only needs to hit the Hariyama, we have a 90% chance of success as opposed to an 81% chance with Quash. 
And that brings today's episode of Are You Smarter Than a Pokemon to a close. Did you win? Did you lose? I have no way of knowing how you did, thanks to that rapscallion that is time, but I do know one thing for certain. You probably did better than Richard. If you didn't, I mean, I mean I'm not gonna lie, that is, that is pretty embarrassing for you. But it looks like that's all the time we have for today, folks. So tune in next week, same time, same channel, to find out, are you smarter than a Pokemon?